What's going on everyone? How's it going? This is Jurassic Mods. We are going to be putting a 430 in 430N DVD unit factory Chrysler OEM into my 2015 Jeep Wrangler Dino Jeep. Today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be soldering on some accessories to this lot pick air harness. Here you go guys, lock pick air harness, it's pretty dope. It's got a bunch of accessories, outputs, you can put cameras on them. So today what I'm doing is, I'm gonna be taking this voltage regulator, DC to DC. It's gonna be taking a 12 volt input, 12 volt input right here, 12 volt in, to a five volt, five volt USB out. Why this is important, it will live behind the dash and it will be used to power this HD video converter right here guys, HD video converter. What this will do is it will allow you to take an HDMI signal and change it to an RCA output. So if you'll notice, the lockpick harness has ta-da there as well as here in the back. So these guys right here are outputs, these guys right here are inputs. So what I can do is, I can take a iPhone or an iPod through the lightning audio, lightning audio right here, to a HDMI and power it, send it from the HDMI all the way in to my HDMI to AV converter right here, HDMI, look at that, RCA outputs, right? RCA outputs, these guys will go into the lock pick unit right here, the lock pick unit. This guy right here. And then that will send it to the back of our 430N head unit. And this is important, so that way, if you guys are like me, you like to download everything digitally. So let's say we're going on a road trip, we got a cool passenger, we're going on some dope adventure, going scuba diving, as you guys all know I love diving. And uh, it's a long road trip, 12, 13 hours. We can take out our handy dandy phone, like this guy right here, you can stream anything from the phone digitally, be it Pandora, Netflix, you can do movies, you can, you can send it and stream it straight to your 430N, that way you have full access to your library. So what you're gonna need to do is the HDMI to AV needs power. So what it has, it has a mini USB right here, a mini USB, plugs into the side right here, Whoops, I get it right. Plugs into the side, right? So then it needs USB power, right? USB power. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to hardwire or solder here in a few minutes the 12 to 5 volt converter to the back of the harness. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna have this guy right here. We can snap it in place and all this can be cleaned up, heat shrunk, and zip tied nicely together and go behind the dash so everything can live nice and out of sight and cleaned up. So you're asking yourself, hey, what about that extra USB? What are you gonna do with that? Well, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do with that, guys. I'm still waiting on the part, and when I get it, I'll be soon to make a little video of it for you. But I have a port that I've ordered. It's about this big around. It's gonna have HDMI on the bottom, USB on the top, and I'm going to countersink and permanently mount it inside the glove box. So when you lift up the lid on the armrest, well not the glove box rather, but the armrest, you lift up the armrest, you look down. As you guys know, Jeeps have a USB and a uh, 12 volt cigarette lighter input. So beside that, we're going to drill and put a HDMI and a USB input. So those two things, we're actually gonna run around the dash, under, under our consoles into the dash. Again, nice and clean, zip tied. We're gonna attach and integrate all of that here. So we'll have an extra, a second USB power in the armrest console, but we'll also take that USB and then we'll take the HDMI and we'll run the HDMI into this HDMI converter. So what we'll do is we'll be able to unhook this guy for a future update and then we'll plug the new HDMI into here. And you're thinking to yourself, why are we doing that? That's what these awesome circuit boards are for right here. And a video I've got coming up, what we're gonna do is, we are going to take an Apple TV, we're gonna take an Apple TV 3, 
we are going to solder and convert it over to a USB powered Apple TV so that way you can raise up your console you can sit it down really nicely plug one to the HDMI plug the other to the USB and then you can take your iPhone and you can stream that directly to your 430N that way you will have a 100% cableless operation so this guy could stay in your pocket it could do whatever you want it to it could go my, I keep mine in either the uh, cup holder or I'll just put it on the first level of the console and shut it and then what you're doing is you're wirelessly streaming everything through the Apple TV but until we do that update what we're gonna do is we're gonna be using our this is an Apple brand product the HDMI with the lightning cable upgrade so to get to it what we're gonna do is we're gonna take and we are going to integrate the power cable so let's go ahead and get our DC to DC converter this is a 12 volt converter guys I got this off eBay this is like six dollars with free shipping not very much you can also build one yourself if you have these circuit boards these are I think I paid $11.95 for 10 with free shipping um, these I would only use though however if you had a case that you're gonna put it into um, if you notice they have little holes you can mount them they got nice soldering tabs on them and uh, you can mount it down to a case you can see the nice arrows on the back these guys are pretty awesome so but for today since it's just gonna be kinda hanging out behind the dash I chose to use this guys we always want to be professional with our installations so that we don't have to worry about anything shorting out or as we all know when Jeep we ride in topless we don't want any water to short anything out which is why I opted for an OEM 430N upgrade as opposed to something you could buy uh, a really nice double din head unit so I, I sought this guy out uh, it's really cool and uh, we'll have an installation videos out as well so let's get to it so guys forgive me um, it's one of my first couple videos I made they're gonna get better I promise but let's go ahead and have some fun so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our lock pick harness out here push all this fun stuff up get our lock pick harness out what we're gonna do with our lock pick air harnesses we're gonna locate these wires right here okay guys these wires right here I'm, I am filming this with a GoPro uh, but in the future we will be changing over to a more professional camera but again bear with me guys so what we're looking for we want to put this on a switchable voltage a 12 volt switchable voltage so let's look around what we have is we have a 12 volt battery constant that's not what we want we have a additional cameras so that's a camera look check that out that's pretty cool guys this is a reverse backup camera tab and then finally what we have here is a 12 volt ignition switched out for 12 volts but what you'll see is we have this guy right here we don't like this guys these things right here are bad connections uh, sometimes don't turn out the best in the world so what we're going to do is we're going to cut this off throw some heat shrink down and we're going to solder this onto our new harness all right guys again i'm be <laughs> soldering for my first time on video so bear with me and uh we'll get through it and have a great time and hopefully you guys uh can learn something from it if you have any questions about any of these uh, upgrades and mods uh feel free to put it in the comment section i'll be happy to either answer it in the comments and or make a video about it all right guys so let's go ahead let's find our 12 volt switchable which is the red wire right here perfect we want to make sure we fold everything up get everything out of the way guys what i'm soldering on right now is is a piece of glass you can see right here it's a nice piece of glass the reason i'm doing it on glass is when the solder hits the glass it won't roll off anywhere or anything like that the only thing you really have to worry about is if the glass is too cold it may break the glass but that's not that big of a deal so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a pair of wire strippers like this. We're not going to use our teeth, guys. We're going to try to be as professional as we can with our installs. Uh, the earlier you can get started doing professional installs, the better off you'll be. So we're just going to grab a little bit back on the wire. See, so look, look at that 20, 20 gauge. So let's grab and crimp it and squeeze it. And let's see if it'll come out nice. So, yep. Let's try another set of crimpers, guys. That's why you always have two pairs of everything. So let's go ahead, try that again. Always looks like easier than it really is. All right, guys. See that shrimped it like that? That's really nice. So what we're going to do is we're going to back up one more. We'll see if we can get a little bit better of a strip. Because honestly, All that right, wasn't... guys. All right, guys. We're back at it. We took a little break. Had to charge the old camera up, as you can see. 
I trimmed up the wires. I wasn't exactly happy with how I looked. And although it's going to be behind the dash, guys, we should always be proud of our work. We should be proud of it. So what I want to do is take a fresh start. I've got plenty of wire. What we're going to do is we're going to pick the 16 gauge. About that much wire should be good. Let's see what we can do here. Scroll around. Turn around a little bit. Oh, that was much better, everyone. Much better. Match up the wires. Match them up, match them up. I don't know how many of you guys are new to this, or not new to this, or old to this, but um, I'm hoping these videos help out. I've been doing mining cars for a long time, and honestly, just due to the bravery, I should say to y'all, from watching a couple of my little heroes on YouTube that's kind of given me the bravery to start making some channels. Um, I'll give a shout out to them, not that they need it, they got plenty of views on their stations, but I'll give them a shout out anyway. I figure it's always good. Uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with EXO Contralto. I don't know if you guys can uh, understand the name or not, but it's Contralto. Uh, this little guy, he is awesome. He is an awesome installer. Uh, tons and tons and tons of how-tos on his YouTube page. Uh, he's making some sick vehicles. Uh, the other is uh, Doug Bernard um, of Amplified. Of course, I'm sure everybody that's watching this video knows who Doug Bernard is. Uh, but anyway, between these two, they finally gave me the bravery to, you know, give it a go and start my own station and, and just share with you guys my passion, which is, uh, you know, car audio and you know, just basically anything cool, uh, anything that is unique. Uh, I go to a lot of car shows, so I'll stick some car shows on this channel. Uh, and the other thing is, is I have a, um, a scuba diving station that I'm going to start up, guys. I, I do a lot of a lot of diving here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take the 12 volt switchable lead. We're going to give it a nice twist so we don't cut all our wires with our crimpers. They do make better tools than this, and later I may upgrade to it. Uh, but as of right now, you guys can see. That's really nice, really nice. So what I want to do is pull this wire out. We're going to solder, obviously, the red to the red. And then we're going to solder the black to the ground. So what we're going to do is we're going to search out this wiring harness for the ground. Now what I have not done is ohmed out the chassis ground. And by what I mean by ohming it out, some of you guys will know, some of you won't, is I will... This is a... This is a T, I guess a Y harness. It's an interrupt harness, basically. So one end goes to the radio. Actually, two ends will go to the radio. And these two ends will go to the factory CAN bus system. So instead of the factory CAN bus hooking itself straight into the back of the 430N, as you can see here, what this harness does, because it is a CAN bus system, is this goes in between it. So the factory will go here. And then this will go actually the other way around, guys. It'll go like this. And then the factory harness will go into here. This is a pretty sick harness. You can find it through anywhere. I got mine from OEM Parts. Uh, they make a lot of really cool things for the uh, Chrysler. A lot of American vehicles, really. Uh, they make some really cool stuff. So, what you want to do is you always want to ohm out your grounds. So, if this was uh, basically a ground that you were creating yourself, I'll make a video on it. But basically what you want to do is take your ohm meter and you want to touch the chassis ground, and you want to touch the point, or the wire. You could hook this up to the, the harness right here, and then take our ground, which is right here, and you can actually touch the chassis, then touch this at any point, and then it will actually send current through the whole entire car frame and tell you how much resistance in the current there is. In a perfect world, you would want zero ohms of resistance. Um, that's in a perfect world. You're probably going to be looking around four tenths uh, on a good side. But in a perfect world, we would want to own this out. But what I'm going to do is, uh, this is a really nice, really well put together harness. So I'm going to trust that they have provided a nice connection and they have provided a nice house for the ground inside here. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm actually going to ground my USB, my uh, DC to DC converter USB. I'm going to ground it into this harness. So that way they all share the same grounds. And the reason I'm doing that is I basically want this to be one continuous harness. So when I plug it in, it will all be plug and play. Because what we don't want to do, guys, when we're working on these integrations and stuff, we just don't want to, you know, we want to be professional. We want to be proud of our work. And if it's your first time doing it 
and a lot of this is my first time making videos and stuff doing it and a lot of this is going to be my first time doing things i.e. making a speaker box um, I'm a very I'm amateur I don't mind doing things on my own but I am an amateur when it comes to a lot of a lot of these things I've done a little bit of soldering so if you guys can think of some better techniques feel free to post in the comments or if you enjoy this post too alright guys I'm gonna plug in my soldering gun And I'm back. The soldering gun I'm using, there are a couple different types. Like I said, uh, I'm using this one right here. The reason I'm using this one is you can push it down. You can feel it heating up. And it'll get nice and hot. And then you can let off. And I'll tell you a nice tool to have is a thing called helping hands. And I don't have one here to show you. Uh, in a future video when I'm doing some soldering, I may actually get a pair of helping hands to show you guys. But it's a nice set of alligator clips. One there, one here. You put your wires in it and the wires hold together so what you can do is you can actually it'll hold it for you so, but today um, like most of you guys getting into this I'm just going to hold it with my hands and now uh, we're gonna hope for the best to get a nice soldering joint and uh, I'm gonna show you guys what's up so obviously we gotta have our dinosaur cigarette lighter to heat the heat shrink up and while we're waiting for everything to get situated we're gonna get some heat shrink out alright guys this is heat shrink and what we're going to do is, is we're going to see about how long these joints are. As you can see, I'm cutting about that much right there. And we'll trim a little bit off this. We'll trim about a quarter of an inch off, about like that. And about a quarter of an inch off the other one. Because what we want to do is we want these to match the best we can, again. So, then I'll show you guys what heat shrink is. So what we're going to do is, we're going to do the power first. So we're going to want to isolate the power. Sorry if this video is a little long, guys. I'm pretty excited about this project, um, and, I'm, and I'm pretty stoked that everything's going on. So I'm going to push the ground, because I want to keep these labeled. So all through this whole build, um, what I'll do is I'm going to keep these labeled, so I'm going to push them back. Okay, so now we're going to be doing the 12-volt ignition. So I'm going to grab this thing and get it to, there we go, pull itself back. Because we always want to make sure we know what our wires go to. All right, so a couple different techniques on doing this. I'm going to use, this is called flux, and this is a solder, and this is rosin core solder. So what this has is it essentially has this flux is inside this rosin core, okay? So you don't have to use a flux uh, if you don't want to, and this is just solder. Uh, these are both 10 base lead-free solders, um, and it, this one doesn't have any flux in it, so you actually have to dip it like that inside the flux if you want to use it, okay? So what we're going to do this, is, like I said, it's a little cumbersome without the helping hands, but we're going to do our best to do it. All right, so got our wires isolated, got it out, and this is always going to be a little hard, so just do your best. So what we're going to do is we're going to push these wires together. Now, some people twist these wires, some people don't. Some people just let them, let them stick together. I like to put them in and give them a slight twist to help lock them in place. But before you do this, remember, we need to heat shrink these when they're done. So before we do it, we're going to pull this one back. We're going to take some of our heat shrink, and we're just going to slide it on it. And slide it all the way to the back. That's funny, guys. I hope you guys are enjoying this video. Alright, so we're going to put these back. I'll tell you, I've learned a lot watching these YouTube videos about how to do things. And uh, I'm watching uh, some of my heroes, like I said, EXO Contralto and uh, Doug Bernard. Um, I'm, I'm really excited to see how I can um, make my skills better. As you can see, guys, right there, that's a nice joint. It's holding itself down nicely. So when I add some solder to it, then it'll be nice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down, let this thing heat up a little bit. And when I do that, I'm going to actually put this in the flux a little. As you guys can see, it's smoking. There, I got some flux on that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little flux to this. You can see it's getting a little smoky. Flux to that. All right, guys. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit of flux and a little bit of solder. We're going to, this is called tinning it. We're actually going to tin this. Now you can see how there's some solder there. All right. So now that we got a little solder on that, I'm actually going to put it underneath and let it rest on the wire. And I'm going to let it heat up for a second. And then it's basically just going to kind of suck the solder up when it gets hot enough. 
Yeah, sometimes it takes a second to find out how long. There we go. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to let that set for a second. As you can see, there's still some solder left on the end. And by using the rosin core, see this right here, you wouldn't have had to dip it in this right here uh, to make it smell weird and have all the smoke going everywhere. It's kind of like an acid. So what it's done is it sucked itself up. It's got a nice joint now. It's not going to go anywhere. We're going to let it cool down for a second. And once we let it cool down for a second, what we're going to do is we're going to slide the heat shrink over. And I'll show you guys how to heat shrink nicely. And once we do that, we will have a nice joint. I always like to look at my solder when I get done. All right, guys. It's cold. It's cooled down enough. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the joint over. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in my fingers till the solder is basically at the, in the middle of this. Take my handy dandy T-Rex lighter, ride a scooter, and you're just going to heat and melt this like that. Oh, set it up. You can see what happened there. It's all heat shrinked up. No metal can touch. Anything crazy can go on. And we're good to go. Perfect. Next thing you want to do is you want to get your ground. I'll flip it around. Pop the black off because for me everything has to look nice and when it don't it really bothers me. Alright, so let's go ahead and find our ground. Pull it out for the harness. Alright, we're going to do the same exact thing guys. Same exact thing we just did. If you guys can remember, we're going to put this thing together. I'm going to check it first, and then I'm going to put my heat shrink on it. So check it first. Check it, check it. Oh, that's going to be nice, guys. It's going to be nice. We'll put our heat shrink on it. Oops. Guys, i got a little shaky action going on here. Push it back. Notice the wires are still tagged. Separate these out. Set them together. Break in. Twist it in. Couple twists. Oh man. Perfect! Doesn't that look good? Again, we're gonna heat up our soldering gun. They do make nicer soldering guns, but this was a good one to start out with. It's a it's a rather it's a little higher voltage one, uh, but I kind of prefer that whenever I'm doing some soldering. Again, guys remember I'm gonna put a little flux on that. I'm gonna pull out my solder. Put some flux on my solder. Now I'm going to, you guys remember what it's called? I'm going to tin. So everybody has different names for it, but I call it tinning. I'm going to tin my soldering gun. I'm going to go up underneath this joint. I'm going to let it heat it up. And once it heats it up for a few seconds, I'll be able to feed the solder onto it. That's what I say, guys. All right, got a little, got a little hot around the heat shrink or around the, uh, the plastic shrouding. But other than that, really good, really nice joint. It's not going anywhere. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put the heat shrink over it. And once we heat shrink it, I'll cut that down. Once we heat shrink it, it'll be a good joint. And remember, this is what's gonna be powering our DC DC converter to power the. HDMI to, to AV and it's going to be feeding our power to our 
USB port inside the uh, glove box. So anyway guys, remember what you're going to do is you're going to put your heat shrink down and you're going to take your lighter this line, and you're going to heat it up. Top. Once it's heat up, if you see any on the end that needs to be shrunk down a little, shrink it down. And uh, there you go, guys. That's two solid joints. All right, everybody. What a fun time we had today. I had a great time showing you guys how to solder those joints together and some of the components you guys will need to do some integration uh, in your head unit if you're wanting to upgrade from like a 130 RES to the 430N. Uh, so let's recap a little bit before I let you guys go. Again, we used the 12 volt to 5 volt converter. We hardwired it into our harness with soldering. So no sketchy joints with butt connectors. Now we have the two USBs. One is going to be to power the mini HDMI one to AV. Um, again, actually that's an HDMI to AV. I don't know I've been calling it one to AV. Sorry about that. Uh, but anyway, and then we are going to have our lightning audio to HDMI converter. And then it will be USB powered so we can both charge our phone and watch videos at the same time. Uh, again, we're going to be using that to send our signals to our new head unit, which I'm super proud of. Again, I got it off eBay. Great deal. Just make sure you guys get the security code with it and the person you are investing your money with understands, well, not really the person, but the person who is taking it out understands exactly what that is. And then again, we are using the Lockpick Air as opposed to the Lockpick. The difference between a Lockpick Air and a Lockpick is a Lockpick Air will actually allow you to if you have an Android based phone instead of an Apple based phone, you can use the mirroring function and mirror the image to your head unit as opposed to the video I'm going to make in the future of having to mod an Apple TV. Uh, we're going to hack an Apple TV and make it USB powered as opposed to 12 volt or 120 volt house powered. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to be doing that and that's what these cool uh, DC to DC converters are for and I'll show you guys that video. Um, I'm going to be using a different soldering gun for those because they're a little uh, They're finer points. So we're going to be using a more precise soldering gun, which I'll show you guys that uh, In the future, so I'll actually need to run out and get one and maybe I'll pick me up a set of helping hands It might, won't help for this, but it'll help with future projects uh, So one more thing and then I'll let you guys go and thanks for watching my video I really really appreciate it. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope you enjoyed the combination of components. It's taken a lot of trial and error and a lot of research for me to put all these things together. And then when it's all said and done, it's going to be really dope and I hope you guys enjoy it. So if you guys are trying to save money, and I know when you're doing projects like this, all the five dollars here, six, seven, eight, nine, ten dollars there, they really add up and it really eats our money. Uh, unless we guys are sponsored by some really sick companies out there, Sundown Audio or, or something of that nature. Um, you know, most of us are trying to work and model cars and have a good time doing it. Do not invest in this cable, okay guys? This is a digital HDMI to a digital RCA output. What you, it does not convert the signal. It will not work. And I wanted to get this cable uh, to show you guys the only two ways to convert HDMI to RCA analog is with that versus the HDMI to RCA here, okay? This, goes, this guy goes to digital HDMI to analog RCA, which will be sending the analog RCA to our lockpick air and it will be show up on our screen okay i'm going to show you guys a with and without the lockpick air harness hooked up so you guys can see basically the functions of it and what it does and it's cool stuff like that and then we'll be doing a video with that uh, but anyway this guy right here will not work you couldn't just plug this into here and then take this hook it to your iphone and then this hook to your lockpick it will not work it does not convert the signal um, if the lockpick could accept a digital signal and then send a digital signal to the head unit and the head unit could accept a digital signal versus analog then you could use it uh, but again guys be careful 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 um, again it's only five or six dollars for this cable but I don't want anyone making the same mistakes I did and um, again I've been putting all this information together for this project and when it's all done you guys will have the information for it. But anyway, thanks a lot.